Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the, today's webinar, Five Ways to Save on Your Dental Bills Naturally. Thank you for taking time to be with us. Um, I'm Gaddafi from Nephil Academy. So we at Nephil Academy deliver high-quality, continuing professional education courses and content for dental surgeons and dental support staff. Today, we are partnering with Nephil Dental to bring you this webinar. From Nephil Dental, I'd like to introduce you to today's guest speaker, Dr. Surinder Aurora. So Dr. Suminder is a qualified with a Bachelor of Dental Surgery degree in the UK and is a board certified biological dentist and is smart certified. She has also undergone further training in nutrition and airway development. She carries out a range of holistic dental procedures, including BPA, free fillings and ceramic implants and is the only provider in Singapore of the home block Homeo block and POD devices for better breathing and airway development. Out of the clinic, Dr. Aurora volunteers for dental outreach programs and serves on Singapore Dental Association committees. She has a certified health coach, Reiki master, and teaches Kundalini Yoga. She also has a master's degree in public and mental health from King's College, London. Without further ado, Dr. Sorinda Aurora. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction and welcome everybody. Thank you for taking some time out in your evening today to join me today. Um, so yes, my name is Dr. Sarinda Aurora and I am a dentist. I'm based at Nuffield Dental. And today I'm going to be sharing with you about how you can save on your dental bills from a more natural perspective. So we'll be running through on how to be your own dentist and some of the things to look out for in your own mouths. This will translate to yourself, your families, your children, uh, friends as well. So this is quite handy to know. I'll be briefly discussing a whole person approach to dentistry and what that looks like. A little bit on the mouth sleep connection and we'll be sharing some take home tips as well. So I don't know if any of you have noticed, but your grab fare has gone up slightly. If you're looking for somewhere to live, the rentals have somewhat doubled in some situations. Um, inflation is very real. Um, and when I see people at the clinic, some people are, say, you know, dentistry is very expensive. And one thing that I can say about this is we can prevent having to have this kind of treatment ourselves. It is costly, but it's not always necessary. And I'm going to sh share more about that now. So this is the uh, surgery that I work in. And this is one of my lovely patients. And I'm sharing with her what to look at on her x-ray and what's happening inside her mouth in a lot of detail. You can have a look at this and you can immediately see the difference. So teeth are really important. It's like when you have a new haircut, um, it makes a really, really big difference to the way that you look. There's a really, really beautiful woman here. And the big difference is the color of her teeth, something so simple. It's just the color that is different. So what does health look like? Well, I can share that if you look at the top photo, this is somewhat what we want to aim for. Now, there are going to be various um, differences between different groups of people and uh, different genders as well. That's very, very normal. But you definitely do not want to be coming in to see me or another dentist when you're looking something like this, which I hope you never look like this. Um, but there's a lot going on here that is not savable. And you can see this front tooth is just falling out there. So we want to aim for something more like this. So what does this look like? These are healthy teeth. And you need to note that the shapes of teeth are different uh, for everybody. The shades of teeth are different. Um, people often see me and they're like, wow, your teeth are so white but also my skin tone is a little bit darker. So it does give this difference in the contrast. Um, so what are we looking at here? We have pretty much all of the teeth in the mouth, which are looking good. If you look around the gum line here, I'm looking for any signs of inflammation. So this would look a little bit red and I'll show you some more photos later on. If 
things were not looking so good, but it's looking lovely in pink here. And do note that the gums can be different colors. So they're sometimes a little bit darker in some people. You sometimes get a little bit of pigmentation in the gum as well. You can just see at the top here, this is also very normal. It's nothing to worry about. Um, depending on what kind of background you're from, this redness here at the bottom as well can also be very normal in some people. Um, but the teeth are there, the bite is looking good on both sides. The teeth are somewhat well aligned. There are different kind of shapes in the teeth, but this is all very normal. The teeth here are a very lovely kind of color. And I can't see any signs of wear, like maybe a little bit here at the bottom, but not too much wear around the edges and no obvious cavities. So that's what we can look at. So when you're looking in the mirror, it won't look exactly like this, but these are some of the things we can look out for. So when people are coming in to see me, these are some of the things that they're coming to see me for. They've noticed that there's dental decay, a cavity or hole. This is known as dental caries. They've got bleeding gums or shaky teeth. This is gingivitis or periodontal disease or sensitivity, which can be for a range of reasons. And these are regular things that we see at the clinic. Ideally, we want to see you or not see you as the case may be before any of these kind of things happen. So what is dental caries? If I talk you through what a tooth looks like, this is a cross section of a molar tooth. And in the, on the outer surface, we have the enamel. This is the hardest substance in the body. And you can just see that. And that's what you see when you look at your teeth in the mirror. This is what you should hopefully be seeing, the enamel on the outer surface. The second layer is dentine. And you can see that here. It's actually a creamier color than the enamel. So if you've got tooth wear, you will notice these little bits of creamy areas coming through or yellower areas. That's the dentine. And then in the middle, you've got the pulp. So you've got the nerve of the tooth and that carries the blood supply and all of the nerves. Um, so if you've got some kind of cavity developing, you may have some sensitivity. Around the tooth, you've got the gum and then under there, you've got bone. So the tooth is surrounded by bone and something called the periodontal ligament, which joins the bone to the tooth. So that's what you're looking at. Now, as disease forms, dental caries or dental decay, it might start off as a tiny little lesion in the, in the area of the enamel at the top. Um, and then it starts to develop a little bit further. So sometimes you might see it as a brown lesion. Not all brown lesions are dental decay. Sometimes it can be staining, particularly in what we call the fissures. They're like the grooves in the top of the teeth and the molar teeth at the back in particular. Um, but when you've got something like this, you probably notice it a little bit more. This is quite early decay and is totally reversible in some cases. And then we're talking, it's, it's left inside the mouth and it goes into the dentine. So the second layer of the tooth, this is not good when it's reaching into here because the dentine is softer and the progression in this layer is quicker than in the enamel. And then this is um, a less than ideal situation. When we've got the decay going into the nerve and the nerve becomes inflamed and infected, and then we get an, an abscess or an infection at the root of the tooth. We want to try and avoid this. So this is what it might look like inside the mouth. Now, sometimes we can get dental decay starting in the dentine and we don't really see it in the enamel and that's because the dentine is softer. Um, sugar and bacteria can get into the fissures, so down into this area and into the dentine first, and then the tooth might fracture on the top. Um, but this kind of situation is not reversible. When you're in this kind of territory, there's no going back. And then you're looking at the only way to save the tooth, which would be a root canal treatment, which you can look up and research a little bit more. Um, or taking the tooth out and making sure if you ever have a tooth taken out, making sure this area is well cleaned out. That is very, very important. Okay, so gum disease. Um, if you do see a dentist, you might notice they're poking around the gum a little bit, which isn't always comfortable. But what we're checking for is, is the periodontal ligament stuck to the tooth? Is the gum stuck to the tooth? We should be able to get our little probe down the side of the tooth about one to two millimeters. Um, when you're coming up to three, four, five, six millimeters, that is not good. It means the gum is coming away from the tooth. So this is what it will look like. You've got some information around the gums. And going forward, 
the bone doesn't like this. So it's like, hey, everybody drop back and we start to lose the bone around the tooth as well. This is not reversible. So once we've lost the bone around the tooth, you're on your way to losing the tooth because this is the scaffolding, it's the support system for the tooth inside the mouth. So if this drops and continues to drop, you're going to end up with a shaky tooth and then the tooth will end up falling out. Again, this can get infected um, in, around, in the region around the tooth and when it's taken out, it needs a good cleaning out as well. Sometimes this can span around and affect the nerve inside the tooth as well and it can be very sore and sensitive. Typically, we get bleeding um, and swellings inside the mouth. So these are things to look out for, but hopefully you're in this kind of territory, sometimes bleeding gums, but this is reversible at this point. We can always go back to here. And there are a lot of reasons for gum disease, um, including stress, uh, diabetes, smoking, low vitamin D. Um, this is one that people don't know so much about, vitamin D and zinc. Um, mouth breathing is another one, uh, poor oral hygiene. Okay, this is how it might present inside the mouth. And again, if you're getting to this stage, it's a bit too late. So we kind of want it. Okay, so it's a bit of bleeding here. Maybe we can do something. Um, but you can see here that the gums come right down where it was up here before and we've lost a lot of bone here. This is not healthy inside the mouth. Okay, so this is too late. This is a 32 year old gentleman, 32 year old gentleman. Uh, he came to me saying, I've got a shaky front tooth. It turned out that a few of the teeth were shaky. And you can just see this here, all of this inflammation. All of this inflammation here, the sore gums at the back, the plaque here at the top. Um, and it's very clear. You can see this little shadow here. This could be dental decay occurring on the back ends of the tooth. You've got some wear here on the side, a lot of soreness. We ended up taking out some of these teeth and providing him with a denture. Um, and it turns out the cause of this was low vitamin D and stress. So stress really inhibits the uh, immune system. So this is really something um, when we're taking a holistic approach to our healthcare, it's not just about our mouth, it's about our whole body as well. So it's learning how to manage stress and building resilience. So this is what dental calculus, dental plaque might look like. Dental plaque is a soft stuff, stuff you can kind of scrape off your teeth. This here is calculus. So what happens is the saliva kind of um, comes into the mouth, contains calcium, it hits the plaque and it calcifies. So it sticks onto the teeth. When it sticks onto the teeth, you get this layer here. You will not be able to get this off yourself. You could try and pick it off, but you might cause some damage to the gums. You can see here, the gum is very sore and very inflamed. Um, some people, um, even if the teeth are clean, get this kind of thing going on. There can be other things going on in the body like diabetes. So it's always important to rule out these things, but very clearly here, there's a lot of plaque buildup. So we need to remove that. We need to get it professionally cleaned off. And this is what it can look like after. This person has got a lot of um, soreness in the gum at the top, which hopefully will resolve in time. This is a patient of mine again, and you can see all of this calculus here that's built up. Um, and when I did clean it off, this is what it was looking like. It was very sore underneath and a lot of bleeding. Bleeding gums are a sign of poor oral health. And um, we want to just make sure that we're looking at all of the factors with um, keeping our mouth clean, but also making sure that we've got a well-balanced diet to manage this. So sensitivity can be for a lot of reasons. Uh, this is just one of them. Um, when we have this gum issue or sometimes from clenching and grinding, we can have an exposure of the dentine just around the edge of the tooth. Um, and that can be very, very, very sensitive. So this is something you can look out for in your own mouth. If your gums receding or dropping back slightly, this could be the reason. But sensitivity um, as a broad term can be for a lot of reasons. And then you've got tooth grinding, as we've just mentioned, tooth wear. This is a very extreme case of tooth wear. Ulcers in the mouth, problems with the jaw joints, missing teeth. Missing teeth can cause imbalance in the system. Um, and functionally, it can be very difficult sometimes to eat with missing teeth inside the mouth. Um, aesthetically as well, if it's a front tooth, obviously you probably want to do something about it in an era that we're not wearing masks. 
Um, mouth breathing is huge. Um, this is um, really something I'll talk about more in a moment, but it's a big issue. It's a big problem. And sleep disturbances amongst a lot of other things that we, we have coming into the clinic. So I'll just dive in a little bit to the mouth sleep connection now. Um, for those of you who have partners or you're bed sharing, if your partner is snoring, this is sometimes what it can look like. Um, obviously it's dark and you're probably throwing the pillow at your partner's face, um, but this is, this is not good. And this is to do with mouth breathing. Um, you see this guy is lying on his back, the mouth is open. So one of the things that's happening here is the mouth is actually getting very, very dry because it's getting very, very dry. Um, any buildup inside the mouth, any plaque is not getting washed away. And that can make you more susceptible to gum issues and dental decay in addition to that. So some of you may have heard of Western A Price and the reason, um, in my opinion, one of the reasons that we have this mouth breathing issue and snoring issue is because of our development. So our diets have changed quite significantly and our lifestyles have changed quite significantly over the years. Weston A. Price was a dentist in the 1930s. He went around and he did a lot of research um, and looking at indigenous communities all over the world and looking at their development. And he found, if you just look over here, good development, middle third of the face is wide, a well-developed jaw and lower third of the face. And you can't see any crooked teeth here. These people are not thinking, I need to get braces. They don't even know what braces are, but look at that. It's like a, a beautiful smile, a well-formed jaw. And this is because of primarily what they were eating um, and how they were chewing and the, nutri the nutrient density of the foods. Now, if you look um, at the lower photos here, this is one generation um, difference. So these are people that have gone out and they've started to either eat refined foods or refined foods have made it to them by a train lines being built. And then you can see here the, the crooked teeth and you can see that the jaw is narrow um, and the middle third of the face is narrow as well. There's a really big difference. These are different communities. Um, however, this is a general trend that was seen by Western A. Price. Um, and he really explored this in a, in a lot of detail and the reasons for dental decay. So there was really no decay in these kind of communities in comparison to here where it started to creep in. And this is mainly because of the diet. So for those of you around young children or have children of your own, if you look at a side profile of the face, we can see here that the jaw is a little bit further back. We have this whole thing going on of mouth breathing. So if you're on the MRT or if you're traveling around, just looking around and you'll notice people like this. Um, breathing through their mouths, their mouths are open all the time. This is a really, really, really big problem. Um, and it can be for a variety of reasons. It can be anatomical, it can be due to allergies. Um, for some people, there's mold in their spaces at home, a lot of reasons, um, but we're just not getting the oxygen around the body if we're breathing through the mouth. The nose filters uh, the air and it provides nitric oxide, nitric oxide, which goes around the body um, and helps the body to take in the oxygen for it to get to the right places. With mouth breathing, we're just not getting that. The mouth breathing also affects the posture. So we've got this forward head lean and it just affects the whole of the body and the whole of the development um, amongst a whole load of other things. If you just punch that into your search engine, a lot of things will come up about mouth breathing. One of the issues is the position of the tongue. So I do invite you to take a moment right now just to, if you're, if you're thinking that you're mouth breathing or wherever you are, you just bring your lips together and bring your tongue to your palate so that the tip of your tongue is just slightly behind the two front teeth at the top and roll your tongue onto your palate and breathing through the nose. For some of you, this will be very, very natural. For others of you, it won't be so natural and this can be for a lot of reasons. It could be the palate is pretty high. It could be there's a tongue tie underneath, um, but ideally at rest, we want to be breathing through the nose tongue on the palate and lips together. 
So what is snoring? Um, I'll run through this because this is so important. We've got the whole aspects of dental health, but if you are snoring or you have potential sleep apnea, which we'll discuss in a moment, it can be life-threatening because we're just not getting enough oxygen around the body. It's really important if you're snoring um, or if you're stopping breathing at night or you're really tired in the day and you've checked your iron and other avenues and everything's okay to investigate this um, because it will affect every system of the body. You'll not only be saving on your dental bills, but your medical bills overall in the future. So snoring is just that free flow of air in the mouth and throat. And it's vibrating the tissues in the back of the mouth. And that causes that snoring sound, which can be incredibly irritating for the person next to you if there is somebody there. It can also be linked to um, tooth grinding and clenching as well. And then we've got OSA, obstructive sleep apnea, which is affecting a lot of people. And you don't have to be like a big person to have this issue. It can just be because of the position of the tongue going back into the airway. So the throat completely closes up. There's no air coming through, can't breathe. So your oxygen saturation goes down. You might have night wakings and this might happen once a night. It could happen a few times a night, but you're tired in the day. Um, and you just, you just don't know why, but you're tired can lead to anxiety, depression, a whole load of other things as well. A whole load of issues with the rest of the system in the body, mainly because of the oxygen going down so much so if you're suspicious that you or your partner have any of these issues at all just get them checked out it's worth getting them checked to save um, any issues coming up in the future so we'll just jump onto the holistic approach to dentistry so i'm often asked what is a holistic approach to dentistry and it's basically just looking at you as a whole person so when i jump uh, when you kind of come in come in to see me we don't just jump into the mouth and have a look at what's going on there there are a lot of questions that i will ask you about your lifestyle about what you're eating about how your sleep is some of the things we've we've discussed already do you have wi-fi at home do you switch it off at night um, where do you live? Do you have mold in your space? I want to know all of these things. How's your relationship? How are your stress levels? Um, how do you feel about your smile and your appearance? This is also very important. If you just remember the first slide that I showed you with the, the lady with the smile, and on one hand, it was super bright and white, and the other hand, not so much. Is that something that bothers you? Um, so we're looking at sleep, we're looking at stress, we're looking at what materials we're using inside the mouth. We're looking at if we're taking out infected teeth, how are we doing that? What is the best way to go about this? We're looking at your diet and your nutrition and your lifestyle. These are all really, really important factors. So it's a very, very broad area. And sometimes people are surprised at the questions that I'm asking, but many of them have so much relevance to what's going on in the mouth. The mouth is really the gateway to the rest of the body. Um, and it can tell us a lot. When I look in somebody's mouth, I can, I can tell a lot. There are stories that come out of there. So that's just a little overview of what holistic dentistry is about. Um, consultation times are a little bit longer. But um, I often work with um, functional medical practitioners or nutritionists who refer over patients who have got issues inside the mouth that are linked to the rest of the body. So if you think of your mouth, it's totally connected. This is the first port of call for many, many things. And we can also detect a lot from looking inside the mouth. Just two aspects I'll touch on. One is dental amalgam. Um, so dental amalgam contains 50% mercury, 45 to 50% mercury. Um, this is what it looks like inside the mouth. And this was um, kind of put out by the World Health Organization and Singapore was, has also released its own circular on this as well. But these are some of the higher risk populations um, who maybe shouldn't have this inside their mouths. Um, I'll leave you to dig around on that a little bit further. But this is in a lot of people's mouths. And when I have worked with other practitioners, it has been flagged up that mercury levels can be high and they can be causing issues in the body. And we do have ways to remove these um, if it's something that you wish to do. 
So I think there are lots of really cool things, things that I think are cool in dentistry. This is something that's a really, really cool aspect of biological dentistry that we're using a lot now. It's platelet rich fibrin. So this is if you get to the point where you've had a root canal treatment and it has an infection or you're looking at taking out teeth um, and you want a really great biological way of healing. Um, this has a ton of stem cells, growth factors, all the good white blood cells in there. So what we do is we take a little bit of blood from yourself. You think back to your chemistry class many years ago, we put it in a centrifuge, it whizzes around and we get this platelet rich fibrin out that goes back into the area for optimum healing. This isn't only used in dentistry now, it's used in many different aspects of medical care um, with really, really great results for healing. So there's just something I wanted to point out. Okay, so I'm just going to leave you with five tips. Um, this is your standard oral hygiene that your dentist will um, repeat, repeat or like time and time again. Um, you choose your toothbrush, what you're using, but getting something in the mouth a couple of times a day is really handy. Um, the recommendations, these are the, the kind of recommendations that are coming up within the profession, which is very, very important, night on one or other occasion. I always recommend tongue scraping. So your tongue has tiny little papillae on there and they collect plaque as well. Um, so get a tongue scraper. Um, I'll have an, a video about that on my Instagram. I think there's one on the Nuffield um, TikTok as well about how to tongue scrape and some kind of interdental cleaning. So this could look like floss, um, choose your floss wisely. Um, it could be an interdental brush or a water pick or a water jet. For those with gum issues or bleeding gums, I always recommend the water pick or water jet. So that's just something to look into. This is really important. So what we are eating is basically destroying our health. Um, I'm looking, sorry, just, I'm looking at the questions here. I will answer these at the end, okay. So if you think about what you had for dinner or what you've been eating recently, some of you will be super health conscious and you'll really know what's on your plate, where it's been sourced, um, kind of the nutritional quality. But a lot of us are eating softer food now, so we're not even using our jaws to chew so much. It's just inhaling food more so. Um, and the nutritional density of our food is a lot less than what it used to be. Think back to Western A. Price. Um, these people were eating liver. They were eating organs from animals. Um, for the vegans amongst us, or amongst you, it might that might not sound so appealing, but there are other ways to get these things into the system. So you want to make sure you're getting the fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K2. This is really, really, really essential um, because these are what help the calcium and phosphorus as well um, absorb into the body and to make the teeth strong. Um, and then chewing the food. So chewing the food is absolutely essential. There are different diets that you can do or different ways of eating that can help to reverse cavities, um, various protocols for these. And I know a few of you have approached me about this in the past, and there are various supplements that you can take as well. Um, but again, it depends on how far along the decay it is. But this is absolutely essential, a whole foods diet. So this is like kicking out the sugar, kicking out the refined flours, any white kind of bleach substances, uh, the breads, all this kind of stuff. Looking at the grains, uh, the phytic acid can be an issue sometimes for absorption of minerals, although it does have some other health benefits. Um, and really going through your diet systematically to see what's working and what's not. Breathe deep and through your nose. We've touched on this already. Um, your breathing is absolutely essential. It's your life force, it's your energy. Um, through your nose, please, unless you're doing some specific yoga practice, um, we want to be breathing through our noses. Our mouths are more for talking and eating and chewing. Our noses were designed for breathing. Okay, so consider dental x-rays. When people come into the clinic, um, a lot of people feel that they don't want to have x-rays taken, which I totally respect and is totally fine. However, I do mention that sometimes we can miss developing dental disease. If you just have a look here, this is called a dental bite wing. 
And this person has got a crown on the top left and uh, some fillings here, a filling here and a filling here. Just to orientate you, these are the lower teeth and these are the upper teeth. And you can see the nerves here inside the teeth. Okay, and then the enamel on the outer surfaces uh, and then the dentines here. So what I can see here, which I would never see in the mouth is there are some fillings and under here, if you see this black shadow, that's decay. Underneath here, this is decay. And I, I can confirm this because we took out both of these fillings. This was a huge, huge cavity, absolutely huge, almost touching the nerve. We managed to save the tooth, however. Um, and this one um, was also carious. It had decay underneath. It could be something up here as well. So this is the reason we take dental x-rays. I would never be able to see this picture um, unless we had this information. So I would never know that the wisdom teeth are in this position or they're up here. I would never know that there's an infection, an active infection on the upper right side here. So these are the teeth on the top. These are the teeth at the bottom. You see these little white things in this tooth. This is a root canal treatment on the top right side. This black area here is an infection. We do not want dental infections inside the mouth. They affect the whole body. This is just bacteria festering. So we do not want that in the system. And again, here, this is a case where we've got a lot of bone loss around the teeth. So these are the lower teeth. These are the upper teeth. You can see here, there's some infections around the teeth here. These teeth are moving inside the mouth. So I would expect this. Um, and then the bones just dropping back everywhere. This is a this is a problem as well. So um, the reason dentists like to take X-rays is not only because you know take an X-ray just standard. Um, there are reasons for it. So always ask what is the reason that you're taking the X-ray, and if it makes sense, absolutely go for it. I've had X-rays taken of my teeth just to check things. Um, but I do indicate, I don't take x-rays all of the time. Sometimes I don't feel they're necessary, but I do discuss with you if you want to take them or not and the reason for them. And this is one of the reasons, some of the findings, some of these findings that we can see. Okay, and my final tip is um, with, with in mind, saving on your dental bills, understand what your options are. There are so many advances in dentistry now and some really good quality materials. So you can see here, I'll just start over here. This is your dental amalgam. This is a material that in many countries is not used anymore, um, but it's kind of just like put into the teeth. This contains your mercury um, and it holds there for a long time, but it can fracture. So could be an option. I don't know if it is going to be an option in Singapore for much longer. Um, but we have dental composites available and then we have ceramics. So a lot of stuff is ceramic now. And this, this is a, a more biocompatible material. So it's a bit more easy going on the body um, and it lasts longer. The ceramic lasts longer. They can chip, they can fracture. With anything we do in dentistry, um, they can it can fail and it can need to, it may need to be replaced in the future. But just understand when you do see your dentist, if you do need dental treatment doing, what are my options um, and how long are things likely to last? Um, this over here is an image of implants. So we have available now ceramic implants. This is a, your titanium implant. Again, it's about feeling into what's right for you, what's going to last a little bit longer, we, we want things to last inside the mouth as long as possible. Um, and this is, there's, there are many, many factors regarding that. Um, but you might want to consider the materials that are being used inside your mouth with your dentist. So understanding your options is crucial. And that brings me to the end of this very, very short presentation. It was a very brief run through of um, something that I could speak about for days and days and days. I'm sure every dentist could talk about teeth and aspects of dentistry for a very long time. But I will head over now to the Q&A. And if you want to reach me, I do have, um, so I'm on the Nuffield Dental Jewel. Um, I'm at, I work at the Nuffield Dental Jewel Clinic. This is the contact number for them. And this is the WhatsApp if you have any questions. And you can find me on social media as well. 
admittedly I'm not very good at answering social media, but um, please do try uh, if you do have any questions. Okay. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, there's some great questions here, right? I will start at the top. Okay. Hmm. Okay, my daughter who is four has sleep apnea due to swollen tonsils. Any other way of reducing the tonsils without taking them out? She sleeps without snoring when she is in our bed. Okay, um, so I definitely need some more information here. Um, and I'm just wondering if she's mouth breathing. Um, she sleeps without snoring when she's in our bed is definitely a good sign. Um, if her lips are together, we just want to find out the reason for the swollen tonsils. So you could maybe try, I don't know how you feel about this, but mouth tape to get the lips together. Um, and as she grows and develops, there might be some changes, but I would definitely check with your ear, nose and throat specialist about this before and doing anything further. I really need to have a look at her to see what the situation is. Okay, let's have your podcast, a health spot with Omar. Current season is how to bring up a healthy child in a toxic world, right? Bringing up a healthy child in a toxic world. And that is on so many levels, not only our food, not only the air that we're breathing, energetically, spiritually, like all of it, right? Thank you, Omar. My mouth is always super dry. Help, what can I do? Okay, so this depends on the reason for the why the mouth is dry. Are you dehydrated? Do you drink enough water? Um, I'm sure you've tried that one already. Are you mouth breathing? So consciously keeping the mouth, to, the lips together, tongue on the palate, breathing through the nose. Um, if it's drier in the morning, again, you can try mouth tape, 3M micropore, you can just tape it this way or this way. I'll be popping a video about that on my Instagram soon um depends on the cause i would say sometimes dry mouth can be to do with something else going on in the body so you might want to see somebody like a functional medical practitioner to get to the bottom of what's going on i hope that's helpful uh, my gums are bleeding when i brush my teeth i've been told gum disease but not sure what's the best holistic thing to do okay so again uh, i'd have a hundred questions for you um is it just when you're brushing your teeth or do you have spontaneous bleeding? How long has it been going on for? Do you smoke? You probably don't smoke. Um, what are your vitamin D levels like? Zinc. Uh, do you use a water pick? Do you scrape your tongue? Are you a mouth breather? What's your stress like? So these are all of the aspects. I would just start with getting your teeth clean so you can kind of rule out the oral hygiene aspect. Um, there are also oral probiotics that you can take. The gut health is also super important. So if your gut is a little bit out of balance, you kind of want to get that checked out and sorted because that can play um, a really big role in the oral health as well. Could just be the type of bacteria inside the mouth. So get a good clean done. Depends on the level of gum disease, they might recommend some deeper cleaning. Um, there are other holistic things that can be done, uh, but also look at just all of those things that I've just mentioned. Are oral probiotics worth taking? So it depends on the reason that you're taking them. I think with any kind of supplement, it's like, why am I taking this? Uh, and what added benefit is it going to have? With all kinds of supplements, some, they're not always readily absorbed and they don't work for everybody. But if you've got an imbalance in the oral microbiome, in the oral microflora, it, they can be very helpful. Um, and I've often recommended them and seen really good results. Um, so again, it depends on the reason. Why does overcrowding of teeth happen in kids? Great question. Think back to that Western A price slide. Um, we're in a, a stage of life with our development now that it's um, it's just gone downhill over the years. So, and this is nobody's fault, but the food that we're eating is a lot softer. So we're not using the muscles um, inside the mouth. When we use the muscles, it sends a signal to the bone uh, to say, hey, grow and develop. Um, so if you think if you're like training for a marathon or if you're doing something, making the muscles stronger. If you're weightlifting, you're making uh, the bone stronger, sorry. Um, and this is one of the issues. So the, the eating aspect, 
and then the nutritional quality of the food. Um, sometimes we need supplementation um, and then there's like, so the epigenetic factor um, and then, you know, mom and dad, what do mom and dad look like? Did they have this issue as well? So this, these can be some of the reasons for the overcrowding. Okay, she's mouth breathing, but only in her bed. That's interesting. I would um, get her checked for allergies. If she has any allergies, don't use masking tape as mouth tape. Get 3M micropore sensitive. I would use that. But before you do that, um, get checked for allergies. Are there any allergies? Um, and if you put me a message via my website, I can just advise you a little bit further on that. Um, mouth tape. Uh, what is a functional medical practitioner in Singapore? Um, okay, yeah, so you can see uh, a general practitioner. Again, pop me a message and I can help you with that. You can buy mouth tape online if you look on Amazon. Uh, if you use Amazon or online generally, you can just search for it. Or probiotics without breath and mouth breathe and tinkering about mouth tape. Um, I think tinkering about mouth tape is a good shout for you. Yeah, you can try it. Or on my or on probiotics with our breath. Um, bad breath is a another massive topic. So there can be a lot of reasons. It depends on the type of bad breath, how long it's going on for. Um, I definitely get hydrated. Um, look at your diet as well. It could just be something that you're eating. Check out your gut health. Um, and are you supplementing or are you taking any general uh, probiotics, fermented foods? This could be something that is helpful for you. Um, and yeah, definitely think about the mouth tape. It can sometimes just be from a dry mouth, from, um, from mouth breathing. Does genetics play a role in the way a child's teeth forms? Because daughter one teeth are crooked and daughter two isn't. Yeah, there are so many factors. So yeah, genetics, but the, the, our genetics can change with our environment. It's called epigenetics. If you just punch that into your search engine. Um, but in short, yes there can be uh, influences from genetics and epigenetics that play a role in the way a child's teeth forms. Okay, does anybody have any more questions? I am more than happy to maybe take one or two more if anybody has anything, or do feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help where I can. You are very welcome. Um, okay, so you can get me on the clinic WhatsApp um, or there's a contact form on my website, which is just on the last page here. Um, it may be that one of the, the clinic manager gets back to you without whatever the answer is, but that's the best way to reach me. If you'd like to see me in person, if you've got anything that you need seeing to or you need any assistance, the number at the bottom here for Nuffield Dental Jewel is just typed out. So you can just make a note of that and I'm, I'm really more than happy to help where I can. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening.